Hello and welcome to Talking With Talent today. I'm joined by Tony McGee. How are you doing, Tony? Um, I'm good. Yeah, uh, obviously <laughs> we're in lockdown, but uh, yeah, everything is going as well as it could be. Fantastic. Now, I'm glad to hear you're well. Like I said, it's very, very weird times. I feel a lot of projects and stuff and put on the back burners and that sort of stuff. Now, you are an actor, personal trainer and a, and a businessman as well. So you've got very sort of many different levels to yourself as well. Would you describe yourself in that way or...? Uh, yeah, I think um, I think we're all business people. At the end of the day, uh, in terms of the creative sides, uh, and I think especially nowadays, you really do have to have a business head on you, mm-hmm. um, and that kind of comes with time. And then once you start to learn the business, uh, you start to make different choices with that business head, especially when you get older. I think it's really important and something that. Drama school doesn't really teach you, and it's something that you've got to go out there and learn for yourself. Um, But, yeah, I'm sort of, as I say, like a a jack of all trades, literally just trying to keep my head afloat. Especially when you're living in London as an actor, you know. You've got to, or London will just spit you back out. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I want to take you right back. So, obviously, you mentioned um, going to acting school there, but I want to take you even further back than that. Yeah, and sure. was there ever a moment that, where you got that spark and you went, oh, my God, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? Yes, and I'll always remember it. Um, I was watching a uh, So my sister used to have this part-time job. There used to be sort of like a caravan site at the bottom of the hill. Uh, so I used to go and help her. She used to do things like ironing and washing because uh, she was a student as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, same uh, drama school as me. And... For helping her, she used to take me to the cinema, like every Friday, uh, yes. and I went and seen the film My Girl. <laughs> and I think I'm, I must have been a little bit too young for it. I think at the time, but we, like, I think she lied about my age, you know, being a good sister and stuff like <laughs> that. And uh, yeah, it was the scene where, like, obviously, spoiler alert if no one's ever seen it, but going, <laughs> great film. Um, uh, Macaulay Culkin unfortunately passes away and there's a scene where he's in the coffin and the young girl is literally in tears and I started to well up as well and I was I must have been about nine or eight going what is this you know mm-hmm. that I'd never had that connection before uh, in any television program that I've seen or any movie and I was like I want to be in that screen and that's where the bug, I think, started to form. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I definitely wanted to be an actor. Or, yeah. what, or whatever those two young people, who actually would have been the same age as me. Mm. At the time. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be them, you know? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So it's always been about sort of telling the story and conveying those emotions to you rather than sort of the glitz and the glamour or the Hollywood or any of that rubbish. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I don't think... Um, Hollywood and Glitz and Glam, you know, I sort of come from, I was born in the 80s and it was sort of like the late 90s where all these magazines started to come out with like Glitz and Glam and stuff where people started to, you know, this is before Facebook even. Uh, So I I don't think as, I'm trying to word myself correctly, like Glitz and Glam wasn't really a thing for Mm. me or I think for young kids at that time you know they wanted to be either like a football player they wanted to be but the fast cars well to me anyway that was never a, a thing it's very interesting they like say it's very different nowadays where people want to be famous for being famous you look at you know many people like the kardashians and that sort of thing seem to be role models for many people and although they're great business people um it's very different to sort of wanting it, you know, for the for the emotion, for the job, for the talent, for enjoying it as a process rather than for the financial gain. Um, so, were you after this moment? Did you all of a sudden go right? Uh, Mum, I want to go to acting class. I want to do this, that, or was it just sort of a, a slow thing where it slowly built up towards eventually going off to drama school? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think even prior to that, there was a moment even in primary school where you do the nativity play. Mm-hmm. And I think this was maybe the first subconsciously I wanted to do to be to do something or be different. Uh because standards uh so in Scotland you've got primary one, two, three, four. That's from about the ages 
about five to about seven, you were always the choir. You know, you got a little bit of tinsel, uh, and you literally got your mum's white sheet with a hole in it, and you yeah. stood on and you sang the songs. And it, and it was the older kids who got to play Mary, Joseph, and and there was a character called the drummer boy, and he used to come in, and and I and every year I seen this part. And I went, I really want to be the drummer boy. I don't know why I wanted to be the drummer boy, but I wanted to be it. And then for some reason, I must have plucked up courage. I went to the teacher and went, I, I remember it was during the, cost, uh, the costume fitting while I was getting, I think, for the fifth time, getting my tinsel on my head, getting this white sheet with a hole in it. I was like, I don't want to wear this anymore. I want to, I want to try something different. Uh, and I want to wear the kilt and bang that drum. And then the teacher, I think, was really taken aback and was like, well, usually it's for older kids, but you're probably the first ever young kid to ask for something. And they gave it to me. Mm. So, uh, that's, that's been a theme almost, is you know, a lot of people wait for stuff to come come to them. Would you say it's been an active part of your career, is going out and just trying to get as much as possible and just ask you, don't ask you, don't get? You have to. And people who are sitting there going, oh, why is it not happening? Why is the phone not ringing? Uh, especially now, uh, especially since I've I graduated in 2010, you have to make your own work. You, and even once you've graduated, that's you. You haven't stopped learning. You still have to go to workshops. You still have to go to spotlight workshops. Uh, meet up with cast and directors again. You've got to constantly, every day, be learning and constantly, you know, creating your own work or trying to get your own work. Mm. Because no one's no one's gonna give you a job, no one. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we spoke about you know, going to drama school, and you went to the Royal Scottish Academy for Music and Drama. Yeah. Was it was it what you expected? What what would sort of a regular day be for someone that's perhaps thinking, I'm yeah, I might do that next year, I might not. Tell them sort of what a regular day would be. Uh, I absolutely loved drama school. It was, but more for. Um, I know it's different for different people because obviously I've got a, a lot of friends and actors who went to other drama schools and even the same drama school as me and they loved it. Some people hated it. But for me, um, every day was it was exciting to get up. You didn't know who you were going to meet, who was going to come in, what you were going to learn. Um, and I had a brilliant year. Like, absolutely, everyone you just got on with. Uh, and I still talk to them today and it was real excitement it was like a real buzz literally uh, and people I hope still talk about it even when you come to audition you go to the cor- there's a it's, called, it's literally an audition corridor where you you line up uh, there was a real buzz a real like thickness in there and it still exists even when I go back today to see old teachers I still regardless of what I've done now I still get the same butterflies and excitement when I go in. Nice. It's sort of like steeped in history of who's been there, who's, you know, went through those doors and, and the possibility. It was just it was fantastic. Don't get me wrong, some, day, some days were really hard. You just absolutely hated it. Uh, but that was because you were learning your craft. Mm. And was it what you expected when you signed up and said, this is what I'm going to go do? Was day one and you know, that, that, that whole journey, what you thought it was going to be? Yeah, uh, pretty similar, because uh, before I went to college and did like a HND, NC, I kind of knew it was going to be roughly the same. But it was a lot of work. Let's mm. say you'd be there 8 o'clock in the morning, you wouldn't be leaving till about 6, 7 o'clock at night. Uh, so it was long hours. I didn't mm. expect that, but um, I wouldn't change it for the world. And it was exactly, I got what, I got out of it what I wanted. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the main thing. And it's the least you can hope for mm. and expect, you know. Mm, absolutely. Do you find that what you got out of it was more sort of the education and learning from the fantastic teachers and that sort of thing? Or do you found it was more about what you learned about yourself and, and what you discovered there? Um. I would. I, I went to drama school quite late. Mm. Uh, my year was slightly quite older than you would probably normally think. Uh, 
so I was, well, I graduated when I was about 28. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would, for nowadays, you know, you think, oh, you go to drama school young. Um, and I tried to get into the academy twice before. And they kept saying, you don't really know yourself. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what do you mean? Of course I know myself. But I'm glad that I went when I went of what I learned about myself. So I think I, I knew who I was and what I wanted to be. But I think that's constantly changing. That's always in flux. And you're always learning uh, things. And yeah, it was uh, the contacts were incredible. The people, it was from the teachers you met, you know, money just can't buy that it's the people like i remember on one day uh i was speaking uh sir dickie attenborough and james mcavoy in front mm. of me. that's just talking about <laughs> film and television you just you just can't buy that you know that's incredible if you were to go back and do it again would you still have that that waiting period if you could have gone say when you're 18 do you think that those those years in between before you went were even you know just as valuable as the time you were actually there? A hundred percent. The stuff I learned between eighteen and going, um, a hun- yeah. And I always say to because um, now I do like a lot of like Q and A's with like younger teenagers wanting to go to drama school, and I honestly say to them, do not worry if you don't get in. One, you don't need to go to drama school. Mm-hmm. Or, or two, if, you, if you've really got your heart set on it, don't worry if you get a knockback or you're going to go through life with lots of knockbacks. But uh, honestly, it's the, I think as an actor, you need to bring life experience. You need to bring yourself. And the more life experience you have behind you, the more interesting characters you can play, the more you can bring to that particular character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I want to speak about some of your work as well. Yeah. Um, so one of the, the things that sort of stuck out to me straight away was was Hope Springs. I wonder if you could talk about that that experience. I think that was so actually before you uh, you went to, to drama school or during the period. I know the release date was. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was. So that was my first ever professional job. Hmm. Uh, I didn't have an agent at the time. And it was during the summer between first and second year at drama school. And I remember it was at the end of first year, everyone, Scotland is very small industry wise. And a lot of my friends were HUD agents and were going for auditions. And that's the one thing. um, And I tell this story and I've got people who, who were there and it happened. It's one of those, if I ever write a book, I'll go into it. Uh, there's a bar around the corner that's uh, sort of famous called Trader Joe's around the academy. Uh, students have been going there for years. Um, I think sadly now it's no longer there. Uh, but we all used to go there, uh, you know, for a pint uh, or a drink. And I think it was the end of the first year, all having our drinks, and everyone was talking about this really exciting TV show uh, about to happen in Scotland with a ridiculous cast um, and all my friends were up for it auditioning and we're at the bar and I said to them I wish I had an agent so I could audition for it and as soon as I said that my phone rang I didn't know who it was and I went outside and it was the casting director Orlo O'Connor <laughs> of Hope Springs <laughs> And he was like, hi, Tony, how are you doing? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Uh, she was like, um, what are you up to? I was like, oh, I went to drama school, the academy. I got in. She was like, oh, that's fantastic. So I met Orla at a showcase that I did at college a year before. Right. And so she rang and she was like, yeah, uh, we'd like you to come in and audition for Hope Springs. I was like, yeah, great. <laughs> I went back in. I went to my mates. You'll never guess who that was. <laughs> <laughs> And you could say the rest is history. So, yeah. yeah, so I did three auditions, got the part. It was literally, it, it was, it was, I've got Orla to thank for everything. She started my career. She gave me my first job. She got me my first agent. So a lot to Orla yeah. for that. And the show itself, um, massive learning curve. 
you know, uh, especially that cast, you know, yeah. uh, you've got Alex Kingston, uh, the whole lot of them, massive UK stars, uh, Hollywood stars, and 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 Richard Madden as well. Yeah, mm. uh, so I was with Richard all the time, and he was on the way up. Yeah, as well. Um, this is pre game Game of Thrones, but you knew that he was going to be, you know, he was heading somewhere, and so I was learning from all these people. So I was filming Hope Springs while I was in the second year. Mm. So I would do a class, then a car would have to pick me up outside, take me to the studio. I would film. And then I would have, and if I had time, I had to go back to drama school because the academy were like, you have to, regardless, you need to pass. So I was learning so so much on set from this cast, and it was massive. It was mind blowing because I think we were doing film and television as well, acting, and and unfortunately, drama schools maybe now, but you just can't teach the scale of it. It's mad. It's huge, and it, and it was it was overwhelming, you know, um, yeah. at times, because I would be when I went on location, I'd be sitting there with Alex Kingston having a coffee. It was just mind, you know, bizarre, mm. you know. Yeah, absolutely. Now, be grounded. Mm. And that, that's one thing I was actually going to going to touch on. I mean, feel free if you don't want to answer this, but did that sort of going onto that set and being part of something that was you know quite quite special give you an idea of oh I'm on the right track here or perhaps you know things are really going to start going smoother now I'm going to get some momentum or did that not really enter your mind? Did you did it help keep you grounded? Yeah, um, I had um, Alex Newman uh, who played my dad. He made sure he grounded me and he taught me so much. In a way, it was kind of his character who he was playing. He was kind of, he was still playing that with me. It's quite yeah. a father figure. Mm -hmm. uh, and at times, you know, he would be really harsh to me, but in a good way, he was teaching me certain things. And he was really keeping me grounded and anchored and. But yeah, it's um, you know I made a lot of mistakes on set, but then they were learning. They knew uh, because I think for the character who they wanted to play Ron, and they wanted someone who someone who was quite raw, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and they got that. Um, but I was learning, yeah, and and then I think once you start to sort of hope and dream and go, because we were signed on for three seasons. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're like, oh my god, I've got to do this twice again, and unfortunately, it didn't get redone. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah, you you definitely had to keep grounded in that one, especially mm. your first one. Um, yeah, don't know if I answered your question there at all, but <laughs> no, I, I think that's that's great. So, like you say, it can only be natural. You know, if someone's coming to pick you up in a car, all of a sudden you're getting treated a little bit differently to other people. And you think, oh, yeah. this is. Something you with around actors. It was literally the picking up that got me every mm. time, and it still does today. When I get picked up in a car, it's you know, it's yeah. I, I'm happy to get the bus or the train, you know. <laughs> and I think that really, and I, and I don't think I'll ever ever get over that. Every time someone comes and picks me up, you Absolutely. know. It's, it's just the weirdest thing ever, you know? It's, it's brilliant. I mean, one thing I do want to speak about is after you, you graduated as well, I noticed you did quite a lot of theatre work and worked quite a lot with Dundee Rep. I wonder yeah. if you had sort of a, a few different stories. I know you did a lot of different parts and a lot of different um, different theatre works with them as well. Yeah. So, yeah, so it was coming sort of to the end of third year. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Dundee Rep, uh, obviously, uh, such as in Dundee, is one of the rare, I think, of only like repertoire theatre company, and it's sort of like a very old school uh, way of training. Because after normally drama school, you go and do rep for a year, play a variety of different roles, roles that you would never normally never get cast in or never even get seen. And I'd done a lot of television up to that point, uh, and I really, it was really important 
for me to um, really stretch my legs and really build up my CV theatrically. Uh, so that was a plus point. But the people at Dundee Rep, you know, they were like theatrical legends, you know. They'd been on that stage like 15, 20 years. Um, they knew the business inside out. And it was almost, um, you kind of see it as almost like a master's in a way. From your drama school, you're going to go there for a year. Um, and like I said, uh, again, massive learning curve. You know, learning from so many different people, um, fantastic directors, fantastic actors, um, great plays. Um, yeah, I would, again, a fantastic opportunity. And I always say if anyone gets a chance to go and do rep, do it. Uh, don't. I remember at the time, a lot of my friends at drama school were going, oh, but I don't want to be at the loop for a year. No one will be able to see me. Uh, but now knowing this 10 years, that's going to happen anyway. So go and do it 100%. It's, it's funny you mentioned that bit there as well, because that's something I want to touch on is it can seem like you're sort of out of the limelight for a little bit and you're you're taking some time. I mean, do, did you find that that has now helped you so much more than if you hadn't have done and if you just stay in the TV? Because a lot of people do just stay on the screen. Um, do you feel that, that sort of helps earn your stripes by being on stage for a year and, and that experience? A hundred percent, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, as an actor, you want to act. And if someone's giving you an opportunity, go and do it, regardless of what it is. Uh, people who are holding out for bigger, better things. Uh, fair enough, go for it. But I want, I wanted to act and I want to act. So if someone gives me an opportunity and I haven't, you know, it's something that interests me, I'll do it. Oh, 100%. And, and I think you're, and again, it's keeping those, like your acting uh, tool sharp as a way, you know, you've got to constantly, and even now, uh, like I said, after drama school, you know, I, I can continue to do workshops, continue to learn monologues, perform them, you know. Absolutely. Would you say you have a preference in terms of screen or stage? Uh, a lot of people ask that, and it's a common question. Um, I love them both. Uh, I think they're completely different in terms of what you get off uh, on a very simple aspect. Uh, yes, television and film is very exciting. You know, it's a big scale. You know, talking about cars picking you up and you get your food paid for hotels, you know, and you get treated really, really well. Um, and it's exciting, but you don't, but then you need to wait for a long time before it comes out. Theatre, without doubt, is probably my favourite because you're constantly excited. You know, you're constantly with that group of people. You're creating something every day. You know, the rehearsal process and then the tech period and when you go and do the show itself. Um, so I don't think nothing will ever beat theatre. So kind of answered my question. Yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. Theater, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so you've had a lot of experiences since then as well. You've done a lot more screen work. I want to touch on Shetland as well. How was your experience there in terms of, again, sort of scaling up and a fantastic cast, a fantastic audience there as well? Yeah. Um, as an actor, I've got, you know, I think we've all got tick boxes of things that we want to do. Um, maybe for like a certain ego thing or as a fan boy thing as well. And... Shetland, uh, I always wanted to be in because one, it's just it's shot beautifully. Mm. Every time I watch it, I'm like that. So I just love to go there or be in it. And second, um, I dug a Henshaw, unbelievable actor. Yeah. And again, it'd be like, it'd be great to work. Now, usually with Shetland, uh, if you're lucky to get cast in it, uh, you'll play one of the villagers or but I got cast as uh, a detective. So not only was I in Shetland, I was in, in Shetland. I was <laughs> the police. No, I was where you really wanted to be. Yeah. So I could learn uh, from Doug Hensch and all the fantastic cast who'd been there. Uh, again, to me, that was like another 
drama school 4.5, you know. Uh, mm. Seeing Dougie work, he is, when the camera goes off, he's he's still in, he's almost still in character. Mm. Uh, the board that you see behind them of all his characters working out, no one touches that, not even the art department. That's his board. Right. So he, he, he works it out himself. Wow. So it's his board, you know? Wow. Yeah. Things like little, little bits of gold like that as an actor. I would still say myself as a young actor, still, you look at that and go, I'm going to take that. That's just beautiful, you know, a little beautiful moment. Uh, again, he was, you know, he asked any questions I wanted, but yeah, it was, again, it's fantastic. Mm. And so you need, obviously mentioning that sort of golden nugget there, I'm sure you've got lots. Is there, is there another one sort of throughout your, your career now that just one moment where you know, someone's giving that piece of advice and you've gone, oh my God, that almost changes the way I look at everything? Um, not really. I remember, like, I wouldn't say it was advice, but it was just a funny moment on Hope Springs uh, with, uh, with, with the legendary Annette Crosby. And I was still at drama school, and uh, um, one of the things at drama school was voice, you know. Uh, and, you know, always warm up and, you know, things like that. And and that was one of the biggest things I've seen. So I was going to television and no one was warming up their voice. Now, you know, it was just we were laying back, having cups of coffee, tea, having sandwiches. And, you know, they get called to set, they're going to do their thing. And, and one time I was in a corner with Annette and we just started chatting and I wanted to ask her, you know, she's done everything. I was like, Annette, do you ever warm up? And she goes, darling, there's no warm up to life. And then she just walked off. <laughs> like, wow, you know? Because um, it is, it's TV, film is a different medium. Mm-hmm. It's not stage, you know? Like when I walk into a room, if there was a camera, I'm not going to warm up my voice to go and speak to my flatmate. Yeah, so, yeah. And I, that was, I was like, wow. <laughs> Those little nuggets, isn't it? I mean, one thing that I, I've seen that is now sort of in post and looks like it's got ready to be released soon. Hopefully, I mean, you'll be able to tell us more about it. Is uh, adultery? I just wonder if you could sort of discuss that. Yes. Uh, so that is. Uh, one of my friend's uh, projects uh, who went to drama school, uh, fantastic writer, and they got some really good funding for it. Uh, so they've shot a pilot for it, uh, and I sort of did it as a favour, mm-hmm. uh, but they got lots of good cast together, and we don't know what's going to happen with it. Uh, I think there was a hint of like Channel 4 were interested in it and things like that. Uh but fingers crossed something does. And I think especially now what's happening, there are platforms that something can happen with it. But again, that was, again, just friends sort of getting together, you know, making something happen mm. uh, or making something happen for your friend who wants to do something. Uh, and, and I still do that today. You know, if someone's got a project, you know, I'll go and do it, you know. Mm. And it's one of those things where you don't get paid. You might get a pint or two pints for it. Um, and I think it's very important to go and do those things. Yeah, you know? absolutely. absolutely. Now, as we spoke at the, the top about you know, the personal training, the different businesses and you know, being being a business person in, um, in acting and also outside of acting as well. <laughs> Obviously, very strange times again. But you've got a couple of businesses as well. You've got the Mind Body Transformation Specialist. Um, have you got any tips for people sort of keeping fit in this uh, these very weird times? Yeah. Um, I always say my number is walk. And I've been doing that every day. I do, oh, all my friends and family, they're probably sick of me saying this, but I always say make sure you get your ten to 12,000 steps a day. Um, and before I was doing that more from like a physical aspect. Uh, but now I'm listening to podcasts. Uh, so I'll listen to lots of podcasts. I'm learning on the go, mm-hmm. and you forget that you're walking, and you're learning so much. You know, I've been watching so much Hollywood uh, 
Hollywood Reporters round tables. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, that's great. You know, you learn. You've got the writers, actors, directors, producers. So I would say, if anyone wants to learn about the business, just binge on that. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. And another business I wanted to talk about was a uh, lights, camera, cut, mind and body there as well. So what is the, the difference here? And, and tell people about the, the service and what, what you do there. Yeah, well, I, I like to be honest, uh, I've kind of uh, sort of put that in the back burner. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, last year, um, and it's kind of important, it's to sort of to realise like, what you really want in life and why you're doing things and for the right reason. Um, people know as an actor, you know, talk about trying to keep your head afloat and stuff like that. You know, I was always physically fit. I was paying for uh, paying for personal trainers, and everyone said, "Oh, you're really good at talking, Tony. You know, you know, you'd be really good in this industry. You can earn a lot of money, and it'd be really good for your acting and stuff like that." And I went for it, you know. So I tried different avenues. I worked at gyms, uh, and then everyone was saying you need more flexibility. Go online. Uh, and last year during the summer, um, I, it wasn't really a breakdown, but it was. I was, I think I was, so I was I was working at a gym. I won't mention who it was, but I was literally getting up at half two in the morning, and not coming back till about half nine at night. Wow! And I was thinking to myself, I didn't come to London for this. You know, I literally got lost and I was absolutely shattered. All my friends and family around me going, what's going on? And and I'll tell you who it was that literally woke me up. And it's someone who I follow online. So if anyone wants to learn about fitness and body, follow uh, a gentleman called Jamie Alderton. Uh, he's on Instagram. Fantastic guy. And he literally does... Um, like no B, you know, stuff about fit. He tells you how it is, a mind and body. And I went to, so I did that transformation with him, like a, uh, like a photo transformation about the year before. So we kind of had like a little dialogue with him, follow him. And I went to one of his seminars in London. And about 90, 98% of everyone in the room were personal trainers wanting to do what Jamie Alderton is doing, how successful he was in line. But everything I kept hearing from Jamie was, you know, do your passion, do what you love, do, you know, be true to yourself. Um, And don't get me wrong, I'm so passionate about fitness and making people fit and healthy, but obviously not to a psychological degree that it's not my real passion. And we had like, you had one-to-ones and he sat me down and he was going, Tony, you're not a personal trainer. And I'm like, of course I am, you know. I go to a gym, I train people, you know, I've got clients, you know. Anyway, that's not who you truly, really are. And he knew I was an actor. Uh, he'd seen me in War Horse uh, like the year before and he was going, go and do that concentrate all your energy on that and literally two weeks later I quit my job and then from that day on I went I'm 100% going to be a a jobbing working actor Mm. I'm going to take on anything else I'm going to put all my energy uh, into acting Mm. and did you feel that that change has um, directing that energy has brought more stuff to you obviously I we quite like here the mental change and the the positive attitude and going towards something one hundred percent. Do you feel like that putting that energy out there has brought stuff towards you a bit more as well? I'm a complete different person, and I'm and I'm, I'm not annoyed, but it's literally taken me. Well, it's ten years since I've graduated drama school, so let's say three years from first, so thirteen years as an actor, as a professional actor, to realise that. You know, um, and I'm glad that I've learned that lesson. A lot of people probably don't. And yeah, it's literally my life's changed. I'm much more focused. Uh, I'm creating so much stuff now with my writing. I'm working more than ever as an actor, you know, 
because I think I I was carrying, you know, that burden of oh, I'm a thirty plus male, you know, oh, I should have a wife, family, kids, a house, you know, oh, I'm still an actor, oh, so I'll start doing another job at the same time. And I think once you release all your baggage and you don't have those ties, you're free. Mm. You're oh, it's amazing, honestly. Absolutely. Well, I think that's the perfect point to bring it back around to acting. Um, now, finally, obviously, again, we're in very few times, but I did see that you were sort of lined up to be in the real thing at, at Chichester Festival Theatre, which is very yes. near my uh, neck of the woods. So t- yeah. tell people a bit about that as well. Yeah. Um, so, again, uh, Tom Stoppard, uh, the real thing uh, at the Chichester Festival, uh, was meant to be in April. Should be on stage now. Uh, so, literally, I got the audition, I think, three days before the lockdown. Wow. And I got it, and I was like, oh, this is not going ahead. But then I think they quickly cast it, and the major went, you've got it, but they're going to put it on hold. So, yeah. Um, again, that's one of my one of my tick boxes. I've always wanted to go to that festival, yeah. uh, just be on that stage. Uh, so, yeah, again, that's, that's going to be when it happens. And it will happen. Um, I think maybe September time. I think the Autumn Festival they're going to change it to. Uh, that's going to be so exciting. Uh, I can't really say too much because it's a bit of a spoiler. The play, you know, the play. If no one knows who what uh, the real thing is, it's you're watching it, but you're not too sure if it is the real thing. If it's the play you're watching, because it's about a writer, so you're not too sure if you're watching his play or the play. So okay. So it's literally Inception on stage. Sounds very interesting. I mean, anyone that's not been to the Chichester Festival Theatre as well, it is fantastic there. And some yeah. world-class names have performed on that stage. So congratulations, mate. Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, it's got a good cast so far. Uh, but, yeah, it's I can't wait to do it. So, again, you're very, very lucky as an actor when you get to tick one of your boxes. Mm. And that may be working with an actor that you've loved or go to a stage or or even a town, you know, that you've always been able to. So no, big that's big. fantastic. That's say, Well, congratulations. And I say, look forward to, to hearing about that after all yeah. of this uh, yes. lockdown finishes. <laughs> so where's the best place that people can keep up to date with you or find out when the, the show is going ahead? Uh, yeah. Uh, Instagram. Is I'm always on Instagram doing. You'll see me in my daily walks. Yeah. <laughs> pictures of ducks or birds or whatever uh, daft things I see. But yeah, uh, Instagram, uh, Tony McGeever. Uh, that's probably the best thing to look at. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's sort of my little keyhole into my life is Instagram at the moment. Absolutely. We'll put the links down in the description as well. Uh, Tony, thank you so much for today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you have enjoyed, please remember to like and comment and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time. Take care.